Vygotsky's Sociocultural Theory by Liam Paquin. Lev Vygotsky developed his sociocultural theory in the 20s and 30s. His interest was in the role social interaction and culture played in the development of cognition in children. It was his belief that social interaction yep. is the necessary ingredient for higher mental functions to develop. Lev Vygotsky died at the age of 38. His theory is only partially known due to his early death. What we do know of Vygotsky's theory of sociocultural development is that babies have four elementary mental functions known as EMFs. These four EMFs include attention, sensation, perception, and memory. Through interaction with their environment, children build upon their EMFs to develop higher level thinking, which is characterized by independent learning and thinking. This happens through interaction with a tutor, which could be a teacher, parent, other adult, or more knowledgeable peer. This interaction requires cooperative and collaborative communication, which in turn promotes the higher mental functions. There are three key terms Vygotsky defined that are necessary for the development of higher mental functions. These terms are the more knowledgeable other, known as the MKO, zone of proximal development, referred to as ZPD, and language. The more knowledgeable other is someone who guides the child through interaction to advance his mental function. The MKO can be anyone who has greater knowledge than the child. The zone of proximal development, or ZPD, is the area where the most sensitive learning takes place. It is the place where the child understands the skill but hasn't mastered it. Through guidance of the MKO in the ZPD, greater development can take place. The third important element of Vygotsky's theory is language. He believed that language is the primary way that the MKO emits knowledge to the child. Vygotsky believed that language is really having little conversations with yourself which guide behavior that promotes higher mental functions. Vygotsky identified three levels of language development. Social speech, private speech, and speech as thought. Social speech is speech used for the purpose of communication, largely to get one's needs met. Social speech typically occurs in the first two years of life. The second level, occurring between ages three to seven, is private speech, where children guide their behavior by talking out loud to themselves, repeating what they have heard from the MKO. The primary function of private speech is self-regulation rather than communication. It is most often seen in children when they are attempting a difficult task. Vygotsky was the first psychologist to identify the importance of private speech, viewing it as necessary to the development of speech as thought. Speech as thought is the final level of language development. Vygotsky believed that children faded out private speech typically by age 10, developing inner speech as thought, which guides understanding of concepts being learned. Vygotsky's Theory and Autism. I chose Lev Vygotsky for my presentation because he studied the impact of social interaction and culture on cognitive development. Having autism as a culture, normal people can't really understand, but it gives autistics a life that people need to better understand. It is likely really hard to apply this theory to autism because most people think autistics have no interest in social interaction. Thank goodness my mom did not buy into this belief. My mom found something people must know about that lets autistics have real communication. Rapid Prompting Method, or RPM, is a method that understands that motor skills prevent autistics from showing their true understanding. 
Autistics understand social interaction, but our motor system does not allow us to act on our understanding. This gives the impression that we are not interested in you, but this is far from the truth. Through RPM, autistics can use the gross motor skill of pointing, which is easier than the fine motor skills needed for talking and handwriting or typing, to point to letters on a letter board, allowing them to more easily communicate their thoughts and ideas. Thus, having a way to convey that we are socially interested and understand social interaction. Autistics understand all aspects of social interaction. We see everything that goes on, like little glances of knowing between people. My body cannot give a response, mainly because giving a response requires me to use my motor skills. However, my motor skills are terrible, leaving me with no way to show my understanding. Having autism is like being chained. We know a lot. Can you imagine total understanding, but having no way to show what you understand? It is hard to have no one that sees who you really are. My advice for how to apply this theory to autistics. RPM is making life that I need. All aut autistics can benefit from RPM. Most teachers of autistics use traditional methods. Be aware that these methods only assess our motor skills, which is unfair and makes us look like we don't understand. This finds us really only being instructed in content we already know. Have MKOs speak to autistics normally. Please believe that we understand all that you say. Please teach autistics grade level material. We are smart and we will perform better if we are instructed in our true ZPD. Make letter boards available to all autistics who cannot reliably use speech to communicate. Current Applications of Vygotsky's Theory in Education Vygotsky's theory is used in education today, usually by teachers or more knowledgeable peers through collaborative group, group work. Common techniques used in schools today include reciprocal teaching and scaffolding. Reciprocal teaching improves students' ability to learn from text. Teachers and students practice four key skills, summarizing, questioning, clarifying, and predicting. The teacher's role is faded out over time as the students become more competent. Scaffolding involves a teacher or more knowledgeable peer arranging a task so that a student with less knowledge can work on it successfully. Applying Vygotsky's theory to difficult text. Let's look at how teachers might put to work Vygotsky's theory in the classroom. Edgar Allan Poe is a poet and writer of short stories. His works can be difficult to decipher. We will use one paragraph from his short story, The Cask of Amontillado, to see how teachers might use Vygotsky's theory to teach students how to make sense of his writing. Let's read this paragraph together. The thousand injuries of Fortunato I had borne as best I could, but when he ventured upon insult, I vowed revenge. You, who so well know the nature of my soul, will not suppose, however, that I gave utterance to a threat. At length, I would be avenged. This was a point definitively settled. But the very definitiveness with which it was resolved precluded the idea of risk. I must not only punish, but punish with impunity. A wrong is unredressed when retribution overtakes its redresser. It is equally unredressed when the avenger fails to make himself felt as such to him who has done the wrong. Now see if you can interpret what the text is saying. Probably you have an idea that it is a story about revenge but you might not really have a clear idea of what Poe is exactly saying in this passage. One strategy a Bogotskian teacher could use is to have you underline all of the words you don't understand and then work within small groups to define those words and discuss their meaning within the context of the passage. Some words you may have underlined are precluded. It's a verb meaning made impossible in advance or prevented. Impunity, a noun, meaning freedom from punishment. Retribution, a noun, meaning punishment. And unredressed. Redress means to set, right, or rectify. Unredressed is the opposite. 
here he is saying that he is justified in seeking revenge for the insult that fortunato has done to him because fortunato has not paid for having wronged him now that you have defined words and discussed their meaning within the story see if you can make better sense of this paragraph this exercise demonstrates instruction that is in your zpd and how through collaborative communication with a MKO, you now have better understanding of the text and some strategies to decipher difficult text in the future. Now that we have concluded our presentation and activity, answer the following questions to assess your understanding of the information presented. 1. Describe ways in which the activity of interpreting text was in your ZPD. And 2. In our activity, who served as the MKO?